But I like my money too. If you're using reverse cycle air conditioning, guess what? It's hard to enjoy both. That's why I use EnviroTemp. You should too. EnviroTemp is a one-time energy-saving solution for your reverse cycle air conditioning that costs from $319 on a split system and from $549 on a fully ducted. Call EnviroTemp now and I bet they'll even throw in a free bonus like... Well, you'll have to call now to find out. That's 131240. 131240. Bali holidays are on sale now at Flight Centre. You can get flights and four nights in Cuda with breakfast from just $665. Or get flights and four nights in a Seminyak villa with breakfast, transfers and a bonus massage from just $799. For more great deals, call Flight Centre. 131600. 131600. License number double T A two five four. Call one three one six hundred. The five double A breakfast show. Flexi time may be under threat within one of our biggest departments, the health department. What's going on? Jan McMahon is the general secretary of the Public Service Association. Morning, Jan. Jan, why does the government believe this is going to save them money? They've got it completely wrong. There is no cost saving at all. In fact, it's going to cost them more. Keith Conlon and John Keneally with Jane Doyle, Chris McDermott and Tim Ginova. Weekday mornings from 6 on 1395. Adelaide's 5AA Interactive Radio. Call 8223 0000. Sean Perry. Hmm, there's that man who's shocked that I'm on air. Sean Perry. What's he doing? At 18 minutes past 5 in the AM, there on... AM radio. Well, I'm here, aren't I? And in just a minute, well, no, less than that, in mere seconds, in fact, I'm going to be talking to a man who's over the seas and far away, but not that far away. He's in New Zealand. So we're going to be talking to Selwyn Manning. How are you? Yeah, good day, Sean. How are things? Very exciting now that we're speaking to you. Oh, I'll try and live up to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you got for me this morning? Well, it's a bit of an update of what's been happening over here in New Zealand. Um, two items, Sean. Um, one is relating to, uh, well, they're both politics, but the first one is about paid parental leave um, and a move to extend it from 14 weeks paid parental leave to six months, um, and that's um, being threatened by the government to be blocked. Um, the other thing we'll talk about is uh, more political news. Um, the Nationals moving to save hundreds of millions of dollars in slashing the public service through staff cuts, but it's spent more on pu- private consumption. So those are the two things that have been consuming the news here, Sean. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's the same worldwide, isn't it? These these subjects. Yeah, it is. It's a similar trend, I guess. And the the, the first one, like relating to the paid parental leave, um, it came in back in the two thousands under the Labor led government uh, uh, when it was in um, a coalition with the Alliance Party, which was a, a centre left um, party, um, and. That, that, that was resisted quite strongly by the nationals when they were in opposition and, and certainly from many employer kind of uh, groups that, around the country. Um, this, this time the nationals are in government over here um, and the Labour-led uh, opposition is unified in trying to extend it out from that 14 weeks to six months. Um, that's paid parental leave. Uh, the uh, the um, it's not just the opposition parties, though, um, that are pushing for this. They actually have the numbers and other parties that have been propping up the nationals and the coalition here, um, United Future and the Māori Party, they're both on side on this and saying, yep, we'll support it, at least through the select committee stages. And that's drawn the Finance Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, Bill English, uh, drawn him out of the uh, the beehive, as we call it here, and he's said, well, it, you know, if it goes through the select committee things, at the end of the day, we'll veto it and it won't become law. I mean, is it really something that's doable? I mean, if you're looking at, at running a business and and someone gets pregnant, then uh, to, to lose them for six months at the end of that pregnancy, uh, that's a, a great deal of time that you've got to be able to pay them and then get someone in to replace them. And, you know, you've just got to wonder whether it's sustainable. You know, there is all sorts of arguments. Be interesting too to see, you know, whether or not you, which way your listeners see this going. You know, from from the family point of view, from the uh, the, the woman's point of view, um, you know, um, the, the right to have a child. You know, so um, this is one of the ways that can kind of take any um, inequality, I suppose, um, out of 
the way things are done in the employment kind of areas, employment law, and 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 what's what's available to women who are um, wanting to have a child. Um, some would say, well, if they want to have a child, they shouldn't be in the workforce. But you know, those kind of attitudes seem to clash sometimes, and perhaps. Uh, you know, many would argue are, are, are um, attitudes from the, from the past. So it'd be interesting to see that what, what people think of that. I think, and the, the other thing is, uh, uh, with the with the, uh, the the national led government here, it's saying that it would veto it because it has been trying very much to to bring the country back into budget surplus by 2014 2015, um, and any extra expenditure on the government. Uh, budget, if you like, um, is going to put a strain on the whole machine. Um, and that is something that the Finance Minister, Bill English, is resisting. So he's saying, in, in simple terms, listen, might be a good idea, but we just can't afford it right now. And uh, the opposition parties are saying, well, you know, we, we, we've got the numbers. We think the country should have this as a part of its, its working culture. Um, and, and you're going to have to bite this one. And he's saying, no way. So that, that's pretty much the guts of that first issue. What about the, the attitude, of course, that, that some people will be putting forward that that employers will just quite simply think, you know what, uh, if we've got a choice between employing a female or a male, we're going to employ the male. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, there, there's the problems, isn't it? One one is the cost factor and the other one is training and replacing. Um, already, you know, a lot of people in, in the New Zealand, are, if they take parental leave, they'll have that first um, 14 weeks paid. Yep. Many of them take the option of um, having non-paid parental leave uh, right through the full year. Um, and it seems like a lot of employers already have adjusted to to this uh, kind of culture where, OK, well, they put a, a person on a one-year contract to cover that um, the person on parental leave, um, and, and that's just the way it is. I know one person even yesterday was saying, oh, it look, looks like I've, um, I've got the opportunity of a fairly good job. Um, it, uh, uh, a person's going on parental leave and um, this suits me perfectly for a year um, that person is highly skilled highly highly trained and uh, you know so there, there's all sorts of aspects to the argument um, the other thing is is that uh, um, if somebody is wanting to have a family um, like we know um, it's a it's a often a determined um, and, and, and and you know a, a part of the life's goal and so whether or not they're going to get paid parental leave is not going to stop them from from perhaps um, doing that um, the other thing is is like what you're saying there, it underscores you know this thing of consideration at the front end of a uh, job. Um, you know when someone's going to employ someone into a job, and whether or not they think, oh well, I might as well go with the guy, go with the bloke. Um, there won't be the problems there. We had a had a thing actually last year, Sean, that popped up about that. Um, the um, one of the heads of the employers uh, fit, um, association here in New Zealand um, went public, made a public comment about. You know, we raised it on um, your show actually at the time. It was um, seen as very derogatory. You know, he kind of came out and he says, "Oh, who who would employ?" Yeah, this is the head of the employers association. Mm. Who, who basically what he was saying was, "Who would employ a woman anyway?" You know, uh, the non-productive once a month. And so you can oh. see where he was going. <laughs> and it was just an appalling kind of response. You know, uh, thing to say. And the response was huge. He tried to backpedal off the comment, but at the end of the day, he lost his position as a consequence of it. Wow. All right, let's move on. Yeah. And the, the other issue, yeah, it's, um, you know, the, this whole thing, this is right across the board. We've spoken many times on um, your program on um, 5AA about the Nationals, uh, particularly in this, this term, um, they came into, they got re-elected in November last year. In this term, they're saying, right, we're going to really bite the bullet here. We're going to slash public spending right across the board, the public services going to really, really um, be, have its staff numbers trimmed right back. Um, they're determined to have uh, less government and, and uh, um, what they say is a more efficient um, running of the economy. Now, at the same time, there's been some work going on as to, OK, they've cut staff, they've saved money on staff budgets in this area. Have they spent more on consultants? And some work by a guy called Keith Nee, who's a freelance journalist here, and he's really good at that data mining kind of stuff. We're getting numbers from all sorts and actually making making sense of those, and he did that yesterday, and the New Zealand Herald ran a story which was showing um, that the actual um, money spent on consultants had, had gone up over the, uh, over the last uh, three years since the Nationals came in by quite considerable amounts in some portfolios. The other thing, Sean, that's a, a real problem with this is what the, um, 
the uh, investigation by Keith uh, did. It exposed that there is no level kind of playing field, as, if you like, if that's a way of explaining it, to get the numbers that all make sense. Like some ministries would calculate their uh, consultants by defining them in one way. Another ministry or a department would calculate them in a different way. So you would, he, he was finding that you would never get a steady kind of return on whether or not those numbers were the same from ministry to ministry. Um, the other thing was is that it didn't appear that the government really wanted to know, um, that there was no move to really nail down exactly how many consultants were being hired and contracted right across the public service since it came into government. And it's um, an interesting factor. It's been limping on um, with this over the last 24 hours, and hasn't the government hasn't really come out with a, a, a decisive plan. But maybe that's because its Prime Minister, John Key, again, is over um, having a holiday for the second time uh, since Christmas um, with his family in Europe. So maybe they're, they're like a, a ship without the, the tiller at the moment. It's one of those things, though, consultants. I mean, you can't even work out how many who or where. And then on top of that, you've got to wonder how, how valid a lot of this consultancy is. That There seems to be a world that we have now where as soon as anything's even slightly in doubt, I'll get a consultant in. We'll just consult on this. Yeah, it's a strange thing, isn't it? And the other thing, what, what these um, numbers have, have shown um, is that many of people who have been laid off from the public service who have built up a, a career, a life career's uh, worth of experience, getting laid off, in some cases, quite large redundancy packages, and then they're immediately being rehired back on a contract, you know, as a consultant. And it just seems to be a strange thing where that, that obviously a person who does not have the security of long-term employment um, will charge more for the services that they did when they were employed by the public service. So the government, while it's been pushing this policy of supposed uh, efficiency gains within the ministries and departments, is now under pressure to kind of show that it is actually an efficient uh, ideological plan that is moving through. Um, the, the big ticket items on this, of course, have been um, how uh, the government has been moving to do exactly this in our foreign affairs diplomacy areas. Once again, we've spoken on this in previous weeks, um, where our um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in particular is um, having to look at how to restructure to meet the government's um, fiscal kind of commitment to it. Um, and that, that has um, been limping along for, for many weeks now um, with, without a resolution to a point where the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the uh, Chief Executive of the uh, Ministry seem to be at odds as to where they're going with it. Selma, it's been an absolute pleasure. I have to go to news very, very shortly. But uh, I hope things uh, work out. With I'm these... sure they do in the end of the day, don't they, Sean? Yeah, whether yeah. they work out the right direction or not, who knows? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But okay. it, it's interesting because, it, I mean, obviously these are issues that are going on all around the world and yet people sit in their own countries thinking it's just them. Mm, exactly. Worldwide trends. Yeah. All right, take care, sir, and I'm looking forward to talking to you again at some stage. OK, take care, Sean. Bye. Bye. And that was Selwyn Manning uh, from New Zealand. Uh, updating us as to what was going on over in, well, what is going on in New Zealand. It seems they're going through the similar things to what we are. It's time for the news. Anger Securities, Adelaide's fixed interest specialist.